Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I take this opportunity first to appreciate you for giving me this opportunity so that I can be able to contribute towards this motion of great importance to our constituents and to our people within the constituency. Mr. Speaker, it is true that uh, the Auditor General has done his part, but we need to appreciate the work that is being done by the Auditor General to make sure that there is transparency and accountability in terms of these funds so that every time that the cost, even if the work of the member of parliament is not to oversee the whole kitty of the CDF, but he has a very important role of making sure that he patronage the whole issue of the CDM, Mr. Speaker. And we have seen quite a number of development in terms of infrastructure and work being done by this fund, Mr. Speaker. We have seen also serious development in terms of school infrastructure, making sure that we have uh, modern schools and modern classrooms, whereby we are able to accommodate quite a number of students who are schooling within our constituency, increasing the number of uptake from uh, public primary school to public uh, secondary school, and making sure that there is a 100% transition from our primary school to our secondary school, Mr. Speaker. This work cannot be done without the CDA fund. That, uh, and uh, among the many funds that we have within our republic, one of the funds that has been uh, well utilized, Mr. Speaker, is the NGCDA fund that is oversighted by the member of parliament from this country, Mr. Speaker. Also, we have seen serious development, Mr. Speaker, in terms of renovations, in terms of making sure that we have given our students enough infrastructure to make sure they are comfortable even when they are schooling and even when they are doing their studies within our public primary school, Mr. Speaker. The issue of the CDF also deals with in terms of security, making sure that, Mr. Speaker, we have enough police posts, we have enough police stations, we are looking into issues to do with those developments so that also we can be able to house our police officers and our police men and our police women within our constituency so that we can enhance the security system within the constituency, Mr. Speaker. The bursary also has been a very, very big issue within our republic and within our constituency. And I, and I dare say, Mr. Speaker, I think we also need to look at, in terms of uh, fairness, how we distribute these uh, uh, bursaries, Mr. Speaker, in our constituency. Sometimes we realize that we have so many members for example, in my constituency, Kebab constituency, I have 120,000 voters, Mr. Speaker. And you realize the amount of money that we get for bursaries is not enough to make sure that there is equal distribution of this bursary. Sometimes we tend to let some students go without the bursaries, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, we will recommend. And with time, we are going to bring to the floor of this House an amendment to this NGCDF Act so that we can be able to separate between the bursary and the infrastructure development of the CDF, Mr. Mr. Speaker, whereby we will make sure that any student within the Republic of Kenya can get an equal share of the bursary, it, whether you are in uh, Kiamba or whether you are in Wasingishu, whether you are in Wajia, the amount of bursary that each and every student gets allocated to him from the Constitutional Development Fund, we make sure that all over the Republic is the equal amount of money that all the students are able to receive within the Republic, Mr. Speaker. And I therefore say, that will bring this amendment and make sure that we support the bursary, make sure that we support the NGCDF so that we can separate the bursary and the infrastructure. And we make sure that even the board itself has been able to audit and to make sure that all the students within the Republic of Kenya are able to get same allocation of bursary wherever they are so that we can make sure that there is fairness and there is equity in terms of how this NCDF is distributed. Some of us and our population, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we have a, a constituency like Kroiru. We have a constituency whereby you have more than 2,200 uh, voters, Mr. Speaker. But the same amount of money you receive for the CDF from a constituency that has 25,000 voters is the same amount the person who has 120 or 250,000 voters is receiving, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, it becomes very difficult in terms of how do you distribute these resources to all those members of your society. We, have an, we had an incident whereby when people were coming to pick for bursaries form, we even lost a parent, Mr. Speaker, because it, is, it was on first come, first serve, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, we will support, we support the, uh, uh, the transparency and the accountability and whatever the Auditor General is doing, but we also make sure that there is equal distribution in terms of the resources, in terms of how much money we receive 
as a member, as a, 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 a NGCDF, wherever we are, uh, whatever the constituency, so that we can make sure that, Mr. Speaker, there is that equity and fairness in terms of the distribution. Therefore, the work that NGCDF is doing is amazing. You go to our constituencies, you'll see the boats all over, that there is presence of the CDF or, or the money of the CDF wherever we are within our constituency. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I like to support. Thank you.